The police's breakout hit Roxanne has been enchanting listeners for decades with its rocking reggae and tango vibe depicting a forbidden love with a Parisian prostitute. Inspired by Paris, Sex, and even Cyrano de Bergerac, this is a song you can thank for making Sting and the police household names and a drinking game. This is the story of Roxanne. It is October 1977, as the members of the police share a derelict hotel in Paris waiting to perform a gig. Outside their rundown hotel, down to the alleyway, they can see bookstores, sex shops, and even prostitutes walking the street at night. Guitarist Andy Summers recalls, We were supposed to do this shitty little gig with the damned, and we'd driven to Paris from Holland. The night before, we all went our separate ways, and Sting was wandering around, looking at all the hookers. Sting was enraptured by the allure of these working women, and thus began his musical tale of a man falling in love with one of them, Sting says. It was the first time I'd seen prostitution on the streets, and those birds were actually beautiful. I had a tune going around in my head, and I imagined being in love with one of those girls. So we have the inspiration for the story, but what about that devastatingly beautiful name, Roxanne? Well, it would seem Sting wasn't only inspired by the idea of falling in love with a prostitute, but also a poster for the play Cyrano de Bergerac. Inside that very same Parisian hotel, the poster hung there peeling off the wall. Roxanne being Cyrano's unrequited love proved to be the perfect name for Sting's song about a seemingly forbidden one. With this, Sting begins Roxanne as a bossa nova tune on a nylon string guitar. Sting brings this initial version of Roxanne back to London and shyly shows it to the rest of the band. Andy Summers recalls that day. Sting played it for me in my living room early on. He was very shy at first bringing in his songs, but it was brilliant and later on, we all worked it out in a damp basement in North London. I remember Stuart telling Sting where to place the bass notes, which was a bit tricky. Andy continues to suggest that the iconic rhythm was also egged on by Stuart Copeland. Andy says, We started playing around with it and came up with something where I was able to play four in the bar, Stuart put the slight reggae thing on, and Sting changed where he put the bass beats. We worked it up in one afternoon. Stuart Copeland's brother, Miles Copeland, who often visited the police in the studio, thought the song could be a smash hit, despite the fact that it was quite different than their more punk songs. Miles took the song to AM and got it released, but it didn't perform well initially, and one of those reasons could be the fact that the BBC refused to allow Roxanne into their playlist because of its subject matter, effectively banning it. Sting was pissed, he says. There was no talk about fucking in it. It wasn't a smutty song in any sense of the word. It was a real song with a real felt lyric, and they wouldn't play it on the grounds that it was about a prostitute. The BBC sure was trigger happy with their bands, weren't they? Just ask the Beatles. However, as time went on, the song began to creep up the charts, even breaking into America. Andy Summers says, Originally, it was picked up by a radio station in Texas. From there, it went to WBCN in Boston, and this disc jockey called Oedipus started to play it in heavy rotation. Then the song picked up, and everyone started playing it. Then everything seemed to accelerate. It went like a rocket once we started going. That was the really thrilling part of the police's history. It was an amazing experience. Roxanne began the turning point in the police's career and elevated them to stardom and chart-topping successful songs like Message in a Bottle and Walking on the Moon. And as we conclude this story, I'd like to leave you all with this great quote from Sting when he realized that they had made it. Sting says, I was painting in my kitchen with the radio on when the song came on. And I started singing it and went, fuck, I'm on the radio. I just about fell off the ladder. We're on the radio. That was the most exciting moment. You can never reproduce that. If you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. My videos will always be free and this is a great way to help me make them better for you. Check out my debut album, The Holly Hobbs, on Spotify and Apple Music, and click the like button, subscribe, and notification bell because that is the best way to get notified when a new video is released. See you next time.